What is going on YouTube? Another video coming at you from JD's Nerdverse. My name is JD. We are going to play through today Pokemon Blue with Venonat. Uh, before we get started, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button after the video if you like it. Also comment down below. It helps the algorithm out immensely. And then also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Twitter it's JD's underscore or JD's Nerdverse and Instagram is JD's underscore nerd underscore verse. So, we're playing through with Venonat. Let's look at Venonat stats. Honestly, Venonat does not have bad stats for a first generation bug type or first stage bug type Pokemon. If you compare his stats, so if you look at the stats, it says the base total is 305. It's actually 350. Uh, I'm sorry, 250 because you don't have special defense in Gen 1, you just have special. Uh, but if you compare that to other first stage Pokemon, um, Paris is still lower. Uh, I believe Caterpie and Weedle are around like 170. And even Caterpie and Weedle's second stage, which is Cocoon and Metapod, they're around like 190. So this is still a lot stronger of a fir of, of first stage bug type in Gen 1. It's probably the, it's the strongest by far. So, uh, yeah, that's some benefits to it. So it's got some decent stats. They're evenly distributed pretty pretty well. Uh, they're not great stats, but they could be a lot worse. And our, our stat total is pretty decent. And then if you look at Venonoth, so Venonat evolves into Venomoth at level 31. So here's Venomoth's stats level 31. Um, if you evolve in level 31, when you evolve he, he, his stats get better. So his speed pretty much doubles, uh, your special doubles. Um, HP, attack, and defense kind of stay, they go up a little bit, but not a lot. But what really is the benefit of this Pokemon, it's special attack and it's speed. And the fact that this can, bug can learn psychic moves, that's very good that you can learn a special attack like that and a speed attack like that. So, that's the benefits to the Pokemon. Now I'm going to get to the downside to the Pokemon. This Pokemon, Venonat, has no moves at all. They're this god-awful garbage moveset. Um, this Pokemon was really not designed to be played through with. Um, tackle and Disable is what you start out with. And it says Super Sonic and Confusion. Those are yellow exclusives. They're not available in Pokemon Red or Blue. So Tackle, Disable, and we get nothing until level 24. Nothing at all until level 24. So our first gym is Brock, and we're gonna have a lot of issues with that. So I have to decide if I'm just gonna try to beeline to level 24, see if Poison Powder is enough. If it's not, I have to, be, I have to level up to level 27, and I have to literally have to do this fighting only Kakunas and, and Metapods and, and cat Caterpies. It's going to be great, uh, but the level up move set later in the game is very solid. If you stay at Caterpie, or I'm sorry, uh, at, at Venonat, if you stay at Venonat, you'll get Psybeam level 35, Sleeping Power level 38, and Psychic at 43. And the reason why I'm saying it like that is that if you look at Venomoth, if you evolve into Venomoth, those moves you get later. So it pushes Psybeam back three, mo three levels, it pushes uh, Sleep Powder back five levels, and it pushes Psychic back seven. The reason why that's important to me is, one, I'd rather get Psybeam earlier so we can get through a part of the game a little quicker. Um, two, if you, if we can get Psychic without having to use the TM Psychic, I can remove Psychic if need be for an opponent and then re-add it if need be. So that's a little bit of an advantage I want to try to take advantage of late in the game. Uh, maybe I'll waste my time trying to level up the Psychic when I can just blitz through and I'll never delete Psychic. I probably won't, but I'd like to have the option, but we'll see. I might just go to level, uh, low enough level to get Sleep Powder and then just level up after that and then just use Psychic. Um, Psybeam is pretty solid, but Psychic is, is a very good move. So now, here's what we're going to look at now is the moveset. Not a great level up moveset. It's actually, I thought Paris had a pretty bad moveset. I guess you substitute Dig for Psychic. Um, that's pretty much, and, and then their, their moveset's pretty much exactly the same. You substitute Dig for Psychic, and their moveset is very much the same. So I'm only going to go over the ones we use. Toxic, uh, we will probably, we might use in this playthrough. Toxic, Takedown, Double Edge, Mega Drain, Solar Beam, Psychic, Mimic, Double Team might come in handy later if we're having problems and we need to have a badge boost. Uh, I might use Rest for the first time in, in this series. Um, and buy. Those are really the only moves I've never used substitute either. I'm probably not going to use. I'm not going to use Psy Wave. Um, not that important to me. So this is going to be a very tough playthrough because we got to get a, we got to level up a lot early. It's going to be a grind early, just to say that much. Um, the lack of move sets is really going to be apparent in this playthrough. 
But, uh, yeah, let me go over the rules. The rules for this playthrough. We can only use Venonat in battle. We can use other Pokemon for HMs and Dig and things like that. But we can only use Venonat in battle. We can also use other Pokemon if we need to catch another Pokemon. Um, so my strategy lately has actually just been um, to use uh, uh, Spiro and get uh, and get Farfetch, and he can use Cut and Fly, which is great. But we still need a digging Pokemon, so you might as well just catch a Venonat, or uh, I'm sorry, a uh, Paris or a Geodude, or heck, maybe even a um, maybe even a Diglett. Uh, so yeah, the running clock. There's only three exceptions when this clock uh, stops. One is Lieutenant Surge's gym, because uh, you can never predict how fast or how slow it's going to take you to get that, hit that, hit those buttons and get the fight Lieutenant Surge. Um, the second, uh, uh, second one, second scenario is if we get too much stuff, we'll pause it, we'll unload stuff into the computer, we'll go do some errands maybe, but we will not advance anything in the game that is inducive to the plot. That's been my rule, and I've been pretty consistent with pausing it during these things. So all my runs have been consistently stopping during these things. And in the fourth scenario, third scenario, which is a scenario I'm not going to use in this playthrough, but if there's a move that we need to get from the uh, gaming corner, we can um, we can pause and because you can only sell 50 coins at a time, sell coins, get a TM or get a move, whatever we need to do. So not not like that one is only coming handy one time. Um, three, there's no glitches other than the bad juice glitch. We can't use the Poké Doll glitch. We can't use Mizingo glitch. We can't use any other glitches in the game. We have to use, uh, we have to play through. The only one is the badge boost, which we can't help. It's just a game mechanic. It's not exactly a real glitch. It's a stat boosting glitch. Um, and no items in battle. Can't heal my Pokemon middle of battle. Can't do nothing like that. Obviously, Pokeballs are allowed to be used. That's a, that's a given. But, um, I'm excited for this playthrough. So, my, t the time in which I think this will take. Oh, man. Ben Paris was actually a very smooth run. And that took two hours and almost 20 minutes. I would, I would presume it's going to be way past that. I think this might be like two hours and 40 minutes. Two hours between, two hours and 30 and two hours and 40 minutes. That's my, that's my educated guess. Like I said, a lot of times we spent early just trying to get through Brock's gym. So, well, thank everyone for uh, watching this part and enjoy the video. What is going on? Welcome back to JD's Nerdverse. We are playing through with Venonat, aka Baxter, Baxter Stockman. If you know if that's from, comment down below. We are fighting Charmander. Uh, we have Tackle. Tackle's pretty effective. Uh, we also have Disable, but Disable's kind of stupid. If we use Disable and we disable the wrong one, he won't use Growl anymore, so we're just going to use Tackle straight through. So, uh, Venonat, interesting playthrough. We don't level up here, which means we're in the, we got 6 9 experience points. <laughs> nice. Um, but we don't level up there, so it means we're kind of in a slower level up group. So the strategy early in this game is to fight a lot of Rattatas. I am a bug type. So, as you've seen my videos before, the strategy is to avoid as many birds as possible, which is, mainly means Pidgey. Pidgey will not be an easy knockout, and his attacks will do a decent amount to us, so just make our lives easier, just fight Rattatas, until we get to a confident level where we can pretty much one or two hit any Pidgeys we come across. So that is the strategy early in this game. Um, as I went over in the, uh, the prediction part of this video, this is a very tough Pokemon to play as. Venonat is very difficult to play with because you don't have any moves that help you progress the game consistently until you get about a third of the way through the game. And even with that, it's still not the greatest because the move you do get is not very high. And I made some mistakes in this, and I'll point them out as I play through. Um, but I made some mistakes uh, with some decisions I made throughout the game. And it probably could have saved a little bit of time. Um, probably maybe about 10 minutes, possibly. So I'll go over that as they happen. But early, we just want to fight Rattatas. We want to level up. The fights in Vermilion Forest aren't too difficult because the fights in Vermilion Forest are against other bug trainers. So we're not affected by Weedle's Poison Sting. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that. And we pretty much over level to make these battles just really consistent. So we don't have to uh, keep running back and forth in, in healing. So I got to level 16, or I got to level 12 uh, with about 17 minutes in. So that was the goal there. And the whole point right now is we want to sprint to, lev to level 24. Okay? We want to sprint to level 24 because level 24 we get poison, uh, poison powder. Poison powder will help us a little bit against Brock because of the buy game. I'm going to explain why we went to level 24. Because right now we just have Tackle. Tackle, and then we also have Disable. Tackle is not bad, but it's a normal type move, and, you know, 
It's not very effective against Brock and his Pokemon. Um, we also have Disable. Disable is also not very effective. Uh, in fact, Disable is probably even worse. Because against Brock, Brock has two Pokemon. Um, the first Pokemon is obviously Geodude. He has Tackle and he has Defense Girl. If we use um, Disable against him, he doesn't use he either we Disable Defense Curl, so he's just going to use Tackle, which does like four or five damage every time. Or we're going to Disable Tackle, which then he's going to use Defense Curl every time. He's going to have a really high defense, so it's going to take even longer to knock him out. We're going to fight a rival fight here, and then I'll go over uh, a little bit more of why Disable is horrible in this game. So a rival, it's not that big a deal. As long as we don't get um, hit with too many sand attacks, which we just got hit by two... And I'm basically at the point where, you know what, I don't want to have to fight through this and have to restart. I'm going to have to restart anyway because now I can't hit anything because I'm actually so bad. And our speed is so slow that actually is already hindered. So we're just going to restart the fight. And honestly, if we just, if he just attacks us, we're fine. Um, if he just attacks us, we're fine. We have enough, we're, we're tanky enough, we can take, you know, five damage, three to twice or whatever. And then we can take on Charmander and Charmander does not have Ember yet. So Charmander is kind of a breeze as long as we, you know, don't miss, we're missing random attacks for no reason. We weren't getting hit by sand attack this time. And we're just missing random attacks because we are just a slow Pokemon. We're not very fast at all. This is not, we didn't get hit with one sand attack, I promise. This is very slow Pokemon. So now we're fighting in Brock's gym. This trainer is a, is a cakewalk-ish. Um, we had to use Struggle to beat him. Struggle does a little bit more damage. Um, than uh, Tackle and Disable, and just Struggle just does way better. Um, I actually did this at two of the different levels, so I had to get at least level 17 to have enough hit points to win this battle. So you see, I barely win this battle with enough points. So now we're facing Brock. Now here's why Brock, aka, aka, uh, he's also, I call him Black Panther, because, you know, he's doing the Black Panther uh, Wakanda forever. So, Brock, let me explain the Brock problem, then we'll go ahead and uh, let you watch the battle. Brock has some issues where you can't use Disable. So, what I had to do is I got to level 24. It's 57 minutes. If you look at the timer right now, it's 57 minutes. So, I sprinted to, to level 24. And when I say sprinted, that's a 57-minute sprint. Um, so that I had an attack that I could use while he did bide. Geodude's not a problem. Just use Tackle until you knock him out. He'll mix up Tackle with Defense Curl. Um, but it's the, um, it's the Onyx that's the issue, because he has Bide, he has Tackle, and he has Screech. If you use Disable against Onyx, so you could Disable Screech, now he's just going to use Bide and Tackle. So now you got to worry about damaging moves. If you use, if you Disable Bide, he's going to use Tackle and Screech, which now he's going to attack you and then lower your defense while he attacks you. And then if you Disable Screech, you're going to use Tackle and Bide. Or if he uses Tackle, he's going to use Bide and Screech, which that's probably your best case scenario. But you just can't roll the dice on it. It's a 33% chance you're going to get a decent outcome. So, sorry, I'm very parched, so I took a drink. So, that's the problem with Brock. So, that's why I went all the way to level 24, so that we can actually have another move. So, Tackle, like I said, just go for Tackle, go for Broke, and just just get rid of you as soon as possible. We needed a move to play what I call the buy game. The buy game is whenever buy is initiated, you use another attack that does zero damage to Ge or uh, Onyx and is in can lower status conditions, like maybe an attack or maybe even a, def a, um, a defense or whatever. In this case, it uh, poisons G uh, Onyx, which does not deal back damage to us because it's a status, uh, status condition. And... Uh, Brock has 10 full heals, so he'll use all of them, 5 per Pokemon. And then once it's done and he uses all of them, then you have yourself an extra attacking move on top of the normal attack you're going to be doing. So now he initiated a buy, so we're playing the buy game. Just use poison, poison powder, and I got rid of all of my disables right here, um, just in case I ran out of power points. I didn't know if I would, I wasn't sure. But just in case I ran out of power points, I got rid of all my disables so that we can use struggle if need be. <clears throat> he is poisoned. Like I said, it is helping us. Now we're in yellow health or orange health, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we get a little poison here and we get the knockout. So very good that we got the knockout there. This next part of the game is not very entertaining at all. And the reason why is because we're over leveled. We're level 24 and up and um, we're facing 
bunch of bug catchers with level 10. And it's still not a knockout. That's how weak this Pokemon is. It's still not a knockout. So right now I'm just going to do a little bit of dropping um, for my uh, social socials. First, subscribe to this channel. Comment down below. Participation really helps. Just so you know who I am as JD. My name is JD. I am a father of one. I'm about to have a fa be a father of two in like four days. My daughter, my wife is being induced on Thursday. Today is Sunday the second. We're about to be uh, have another child. So that is why I'm kind of rushing to get this done so that I can uh, have a little bit of leeway for the next video. And it's just, it's just, I'm just a single guy doing this by myself. So if it isn't the quality you're used to, that's why I don't have a lot of time. I work a full time job and I support my wife and, and soon two kids and a cat. So that's who I am as a person just doing this as like a side hobby. But you know, your participation, your liking, your subscribing really helps uh, my channel grow, uh, if it can. And uh, follow me on Twitter. It's uh, you know Twitter. It's it's at JD's Nerdverse, and on Instagram it's JD's underscore Nerd underscore Verse. So yeah, these fights aren't very difficult. We're way over leveled. Uh, there is one difficult fight in here, and I'll point it out when we get to it. But yeah, we're we're 14 levels higher, and we're still not knocking this out. This just shows how how bad this Pokemon is. Um, just and we only have tackle, so we actually have a lot of power points. So I'm I'm happy about that. It's not like with other Pokemon I've had where I've had to go back and heal so many times. But we actually have a decent amount of power points here. So I'm very happy about that. And like I said, some of these fights are very simple. They're not very hard at all. So now the next fight is against this Jigglypuff. This Jigglypuff damn near puts me... knocks me out. Damn near knocks me out. So Tackle does a decent amount. He puts me to sleep. And then he disables Tackle. So now I can't use anything when I wake up. Until Disable's gone. So now all I have is Disable. And uh, Poison Powder. So this is why I kind of wish I kept Disable. Disable. Because if he, if I'm out of Tackles or whatever. That's actually something I learned in this. If you Disable a move. And all they have left is one move. Um, then they will use Struggle. Uh, I noticed that when I was uh, trying to get rid of all my Disables. And I was fighting a Metapod. They will use Struggle. Because all they have is Harden. So if you Disable the one move they have. They will go immediately to Struggle. Um, you'd think it would be a mechanism in the game where it wouldn't disable move actually at all. Um, now we're in Mount Moon. So that, that battle was tough. Mount Moon is, um, really there's nothing here for me. There's a, there's a rare candy, a couple potions, maybe an HP up. Um, but really all it's here is experience. There's nothing here that's great. There's nothing you need move-wise. I wish we could use Mega Punch. We can't. We can't use Water Gun. So neither one of those are going to be helpful. And I'm showing this battle right here, and I just chose to fight this battle. I didn't have to, but I chose to. This is an optional battle. Because I wanted to show just how strugglish it is, it is to fight um, Rock-type. So here in a while, I'm going to be, like, I won't say grinding, but I'm really going to be putting a lot of effort to get to level 35 so I can get Psybeam. Because look how tough these battles are with just using Tackle. Now, here in one more move, I do get uh, Leech Life, which is great. Um, but I need to like really work hard to get to level 35 to get a move. Now, here in a little bit, level 31, that's when we can officially evolve into uh, Venomoth. We're not going to do that at all. Um, to evolve into Venomoth would mean that we push back learning all of our moves by a decent amount. So Psybeam, we can learn at level 35. We don't learn that to level uh, 38 with um, Venomoth. Uh, sleep powder we would learn at level 38 with venonat at venomoth we learn at level 43 and psychic we learn at 43 with venonat we learn it at 50 with venomoth so um it would not behoove us which means to be in our best interest it wouldn't be in our best interest to level up early it would be nice to have the higher stats but we're just pushing back when we learn moves so not all about that life. I don't think that's a smart idea. So I I, I do I do will say there was one mistake I made in that in in that thought process there. Um, now we're fighting this super duper nerd, the one who doesn't like to share fossils. He's very selfish. Um, it's ironic that he's shellfish and he wants to keep one of these uh, water fossils. A uh, little bit of dad humor there. Um, by the way, I don't know if I said this before, but uh, my Pokemon's name is Baxter Baxter Stockman. Um, let me know if you know what that's from. Comment down below if you know what that's from. Please don't Google it. Don't cheat. Um, and we get the Dome Fossil here. All hail the Dome Fossil. All hail the Dome Fossil. And we move on to Misty's Gym. Misty's Gym is a cakewalk um, compared to Brock's Gym. 
Um, we are a little over leveled here, but honestly, we just have uh, Leech Life is very effective. Not so much against War Seers or, or uh, Shelter, but against Misty. Misty uh, has two Pokemon, Star You and Star Me. Star You just gotta get through Star You pretty quickly. There's nothing they have is super effective against us, but Star Me is Water Psychic, and we are we have a Bug type move called Leech Life, so it's super effective. Um, so, you know, she has a weakness to us. This girl can be tough, however, she does not use the move she's supposed to. Um, it, Peck is considered a bird move, or a flying type move in Gen 1. She has Peck because of her horn on her forehead. Um, however, she really doesn't use it, so we don't take that much damage. And we fight Misty. This is a first time, every gym leader in this game, I think, for, except for Sabrina, was a first time attempt. Um, except for Sabrina. Uh, so, Leech Life does about a third, and we should use Leech Life again, it's not a big deal. So now we're going to use Leech Life, we do get outsped by Starmie. She does a decent amount of damage, but we take a lot of it back because our moves are super effective. X Defend doesn't really do much, Leech Life knocks it out, very easy win. And now we're moving on to our rival fight. This rival fight can be hard, because if Pidgeotto starts off slinging that sand around, it's going to be tough. And we're not going to be able to knock it out. Luckily, he goes for Gust. Uh, quick And quick attack. So now, and he misses, ironically, a sand attack. Um, and now we can replenish all of our health back against Abra. Uh, we can also do the same thing against Rattata. Um, if Rattata does anything other than... We should just go on for Leech Life again. I don't know why we go for Tackle. Now we're, now we're facing Charmander. Charmander has Ember. But we are just over-leveled. And Tackle is a two-hit knockout. So very good. Level 29. Now we're fighting... These guys on, I don't even, uh, <clears throat> these guys on, uh, Nugget Bridge. No, not very difficult. It's just we gotta get through this. This is part of the game. It's just some tedious parts of the game we have to fight. We are overleveled, but we do need all these levels. Like I said, we need all of them. Um, cause we have a battle coming up that we, we luckily have a move we saved that we can be, win this battle with. But these trainers, I mean, we just have Leech Life and Tackle. And I'm not looking it up right now. I'm going off my memory. I'm pretty sure Tackle is a base 20 move. I'm pretty sure Leech Life is also base 20 or 25. They're not very powerful moves, and we're getting through a bulk of the game. Like, we're an hour and 16 minutes into this playthrough um, with just these two moves. I mean, Poison Powder is a factor, I guess. It was a factor. But it's not a major move that we use in this playthrough. So, just keep that in mind as you're watching this, that we're using moves that are not designed to be played this long in the game. There's any other Pokemon you have, except for, like, maybe a couple. This is one of them you would have another move that you can transition to that would help the game snowball at, the, at this point in the game. Um, like, for example, usually there's a dig, or usually someone has Mega Punch, or someone has Water Gun, or even Seismic Toss um, that you would have access to, or Body Slam. But this Pokemon doesn't have any of those things. So leveling up early saves us the, the process of having to level up now just to get by some of these trainers. So that's, that's my philosophy. It, it helps to do it early than it does to do it late. So... Uh, we're getting through these people, getting through this last, this Mankey right here can be tough. Like I said, we are higher level. We really don't have anything effective against this Mankey. However, we do get through this Mankey. Uh, I don't think Leech Life does a lot. Yeah, it's like a one twenty, one uh, a fifth. Quietrap does not a lot and tackles a, makes it a three hit knockout. So we beat, beat that person. Now we face the person, at the, the rocket member at the end of the gym. Um, who, you know, he wants he wants you to join him, then he loses and he gives you a nugget. Um, it's kind of pathetic, honestly. Team Rocket's usually Team Rocket. I like to just beat Team Rocket in submission, make him go home crying. So, uh, we get into this battle. Not a competition, not a hard battle at all. Leech Life, one hit knockout, very good. We get most of our health back. We try Leech Life on Zubat, it's more than half. So it's a two hit knockout, and we get the knockout. So we're moving on to not, and I'm showing this battle again because I'm showing how difficult, um, I'm showing how difficult uh, rock type Pokemon are and how difficult hikers are in this game. These hi this hiker, like, look how much I have to do just to win this battle. I have to poison them, I have to tackle them. I get lucky because they're they're using they basically flip a coin and whatever however many moves they have, they randomize which one they're using. There's not smart AI here; it's random AI, which is actually in Pokemon Yellow fixes a lot of issues that, you know, not using the you know best attack, it just uses the a random attack. And good AI actually makes it sometimes worse, but 
I'm not going to get into that. Not right now. So, um, we're fighting this Geodude. And the next Pokemon is a Machu. So that's not too bad. But it doesn't do a lot of... It, it doesn't do much. It just doesn't do great. And then now we're back to another Geodude. Look how long it takes. It's at least a 5-hit knockout. And less, uh, unless it's Defense Curl. Now it's more than that. And Poison Powder will help us here. But I'm trying to save all my uh, Leech Life so I don't have to go back and heal. Because... Um, we have one more trainer we gotta fight before we go back and heal. And, uh, that trainer... That trainer is, uh, she has two grass type and a Pidgey. So, that's why I'm trying to save as much as I can for that. That's why poisoning Geodude was important to get through this part of the game. So, we beat this person, and now we fight this last here. Who has an Oddish, which is a one hit. And a Bell Sprout, which is a one hit. And I don't think the Pidgey is a one hit. Um, I'm holding myself in suspense. There we go, Leech Life. And now Baxter, we're fighting uh, Pidgey. The man punted Baxter, no! What movie is that from? Comment that down below. Leech Life knocks it out, very good. Now moving on to the SSN and our next rival battle. This is the fourth rival battle in my playthroughs. In other playthroughs might be fifth, because some people skip that trainer battle. That one uh, rival battle, but I don't skip this one. So, uh, I go for Tackle, get the, uh, two, get the uh, three hit knockout, he does not lower my accuracy. Does not lower my accuracy. But I get a lot of my health back, or a decent amount I should say. And I should get it back again, and a one hit knockout with Cadaver. So we go into Charmeleon, full health. I should have not done this, but I went for Poison Powder, finally get him poisoned. Now we're below half health. Now we're burned as well. Tried to disable Ember so that I could survive and win this. Now I realize that I'm not going to win this battle. So I go ahead and reset. Back to the last save point. We try it again. And I'm thinking, okay, well I can get it this time. Which I got lucky last time. I didn't get any sand attacks. I got everything felt perfect. I just made the wrong decision instead of just going for the knockout. I tried to uh, add that extra attack bonus with poison. So we're going to try this again. Quick attack, we have less life now, but we also got our attack lowered, so that's kind of the downside right now. We got our attack lowered, so now we have less health going into uh, going into Charmeleon. Uh, we get a little bit of it back, but we had full health last time. So now we're at Charmeleon, we're going to try for this, I'm doing the same tactic. Um, it's not going to work. Uh, I can just tell you right now it's not going to work. Ember does too much. Um, we almost get the knockout. We replenish some health back. We really almost do, but we just don't get enough, and he knocks us out. So this is where I've never had this come in handy and help me out before. Bide. We go ahead, and I go ahead and substitute in Bide and to get rid of Disable. So what Bide's going to do is when we get to Charmeleon, Bide is going to make it so Charmeleon is going to be doing super effective damage to us. And what we're going to do is the way Bide works, if you don't know how Bide works, when you use Bide, Whatever damage is done to you over the next two to three turns, it depends on depends on how you're doing it, uh, or it depends on how it goes. It's random. Um, it'll deal back double the damage that you take. So, for example, we're gonna get to getting to Charmeleon is not the problem. It's beating Charmeleon because we don't have a super effective move in any way, shape, or form. We have to do some different kind of tactics. So, we outspeed. So let's go for Bide. Ember does a lot of damage. Ember does a lot of damage again. One more time. And we release all that energy back. So we doubled all the damage he did to us. So we get the knockout. We move on. We don't evolve Baxter there. But we're also fighting Lieutenant Surge now. Lieutenant Surge is a pushover. He probably could beat us if he was smarter. He really could. We have nothing super effective. Um, we really do. We if the, the best move we have actually is Bide. But we have to take damage to deal damage. And we can't heal in the middle of a battle. So the best bet is to just use Leech Life. It's not very effective, but it will at least replenish our own health. So now I'm going for a Poison Powder. Get a little bit of Poison damage along with the rest of the damage we're doing. It's decently effective, but look how much damage that he just did to us. So we're taking a lot of damage here, and now we're paralyzed, so that's not even better. That's why Poison Powder is very nice right now, because at an extra damage, even if we don't get attacked with being paralyzed. So I'm showing this battle right here for a reason. 
We are not at level 35 yet, which means we do not have Psybeam. Getting through these trainers in the Rock Tunnel is going to be difficult because they're decently strong. There's some pretty good varieties of, of trainers out there that we could really uh, go up against. And we don't have an effective move at all. We don't have an effective move at all um, to take on these guys. So we lose this battle right here. And you're about to see the, the conclusion of this battle. We lose this battle right here. So I go out and I level up until we get to level 35. Now I'll come back in here. Now I'm not going to use Psybeam on this guy. I'm going to use uh, Bide. And Bide is, again is going to come in very clutch and knock this Pokemon out. And we can move on. Now all the Pokemon after this in, in this specific area of the game are going... Well, all the trainers in Rock, Rock Tunnel, I should say. Um, which Rock Tunnel is very weird that people are just hanging out in here. And then when you take out their Pokemon, you feel kind of bad because they're stuck in a place with wild Pokemon with all their Pokemon fainting. It seems like a bad idea to, to fight someone in a place where you're potentially in danger. So Psybeam does a decent amount of damage. I don't know why I skipped over from Psybeam to Tackle. We'll just use Psybeam again. And then this is a, I think it's a two hit. Yep, two hit. So, like I said, that's a rock trainer, and we, we beat it pretty handily. So that's the benefit of having the Psybeam at this point in the game. Now, we hung on to uh, Leech Life, which I usually don't hang on to Leech Life very long when I usually did playthroughs when I was younger. But I've learned that Leech Life, even though it's a very low base power move, it does a lot of damage against... Um, it does a lot of damage against grass type. And just so you know that because it's considered a stab move, if you don't know what stab move is, S-T-A-B, same type attack bonus. Stab is an acronym. And I mean same type attack bonus. And what that means is if you're the same typing, it's like 1.5 times the damage of what it of what the normal attack is. So if I'm using a bug type move and I'm a bug, it's 1.5 times the damage that it was normal or the power it should, would be normally. So this attack, I believe, is 20, so this makes it a 30 base power move for me. It wouldn't be a 30 base power move for anyone else, like it doesn't work that way for Zubat, but it is for me. Uh, so that's helpful, plus like we do more damage against opposition because they're weak to us, so that even increases a little bit more. So that's the benefit of keeping this move, is for this gym, and we also have Sabrina's gym coming up, the gym leader with the whip, which I'm really into. Um, and she will have a little bit of a weakness to Leech Life as well. Even though Leech Life is not a great move, I'm hanging on to it for that purpose. Because it is super effective, and it will still replenish my health. And it'll work better than Mega Drain. Um, so Mega Drain is a move we're about to get from uh, Erica. Erica, um, like I said, the trainers in here are not very difficult. As long as you have Leech Life. Um, now we're getting Sleep Powder. Now, here's where I made a mistake. I should have just leveled up Venonat right here to Venomoth. Uh, I have Sleep Powder. I also have the TM at this moment for... Uh, I have the TM for Psychic. I should have just leveled him up. Because my thought process was I want to teach learn Psychic naturally in case I had to delete a move and relearn Psychic. Come to find out I didn't need to do that. I was never going to do that because that's the best move that I can get in the game. So I thought I, I just outthought myself. I should have just leveled up right here Gave my Pokemon Psychic, got rid of Psybeam, or got rid of Tackle, maybe, um, and just used Psychic. And it just been stronger. Instead, I got, I'm waiting five more levels to get Psychic. Not a big deal. It didn't cost us anything. Um, it might have, uh, I might have been able to speed up the game a little bit because I'd be evolved right now. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it. it. My speed would go up. My, a lot of my, a lot of the stuff with Venonat doubles when you, when you evolve into Venomoth. So, this is where I made the mistake. And if I were to do it again, I, I, as soon as I got, um, sleeping Powder, I would have leveled up immediately. As soon as I got the TM for Psychic, I would have taught it immediately. And then I would go forward with it with the best possible and strongest move that I could get in this game. So, uh, that's that's what I would change. And this is where I made that mistake. But it's okay. It's not the end of the world. It didn't cost me a lot of time. Maybe I could save off five minutes um, with that, possibly. Um, I don't think it would have been too much of a difference, but I think it could shave off easily five minutes. Um, because with the boosted stats, some fights wouldn't have gone as long with the boosted stats. Um, and, and Psychic, we, we, we don't have to use multiple Psybeams. It would be one Psychic would be a knockout. So on and so forth. Um, so now we're, we beat Erica. We beat it, we get a good move from Erica, which will be very helpful to us. Um, and that's Mega Drain. Mega Drain, we have 
all three Giovanni fights coming up. Um, we have um, some people in the Elite Four that are going to be it's going to be used on. So Mega Drain is very helpful. It helps replenish our health as well. Um, we're not a grass type, so it's not quite as effective as it was with the last playthrough with Paris. But it is a move nonetheless that we can move. So it's it's going to be nice-ish. So Psybeam knocks out Ekans. And we're fighting Tweedledee and Tweedledum right now. These are the two guards outside of Giovanni's um, doors and the hideout underneath the game corner. And uh, I call them that. That's what I call them because they're, they're pretty, pretty, uh, pretty simple, to be honest with you. Psybeam's a knockout, very good. Sandshrew should be a knockout, or it's uh, close to a knockout, because Sandshrew's a ground type, so it's not quite as um, weak to uh, uh, grass type. So we get the knockout of Arbok in one hit, and now we're still not evolving, which like I said, I could just, I could have, I, and I could save some time in the, in the uh, video, because I wouldn't be taking up the time to showcase the evolution thing as well. So I do avoid. I do have that going on as well, but I'm only three levels away from it. So it's it, like I said, it's only five levels, which might equate to a couple minutes in the game. Not the end of the world. So we get the lockout, and now we're moving on to the next part of the game, which is our rival fight. This can be a tough rival fight because we don't have a lot of range. It's not that we can't win. Like we have some pretty decent moves. Sleep, as long as you have sleep powder in Gen One, you're always going to have a chance to win a battle. But we just don't have a lot of range. Like Psybeam is not super effective at all. Nothing I have will be super effective against Pidgeotto. Uh, Leech Life won't be super effective. And look how much stuff I had to go through right now just to get him knocked out. I didn't take any damage, which is good. But he used two uh, sand attacks on me. So now we got to play the game where I got to try to attack and miss a whole bunch. It's the Rocky Balboa of moves. And I have a joke for that for a future video uh, that I'm going to use. But I'm not going to use it in this one. I'm going to leave everyone in suspense. So now we're fighting Gyarados. Gyarados is helpful because he can help replenish our health for a little bit. But he, Gyarados is very confusing. So he's a flying water type. So he's not weak to grass. Does not make sense. But he's double weak to electricity though. Or, you know, electric Pokemon. Whatever. So Leech Life. Well, confusion does a lot. We're going to try to put him to sleep. We do put him to sleep. He wakes up right away. Oh no. And Confusion almost knocks us out, but we do get him back to sleep. So this is a tough battle, I'm not going to lie. Leech Life misses. Leech Life actually hits, so we get a little bit of health back. That really wasn't that much health. And now we're facing Charmeleon. If we outspeed and put him to sleep, which we do, very good. We might be able to knock him out in a couple moves. And we miss, of course, again. And I'm trying to see if anything does anything extra. I should have just went for Psybeam again. Side beam, and then one more side beam knocks him right out. Good. We get the win, a tough win, but a win nonetheless. And now we're moving on to Koga's Gym. Koga's Gym is can be difficult, but not. See, we're poison type as well. So poison type is not going to hurt us. So we're not very affected by poison. But what can be scary is the fact that we're that there are psychic types in this gym. Which is weird. No other gym has like other typing in the, in there where Kadabra is not psychic poison, or uh, Hypno is not psychic poison. So I don't know why there's poison types in this gym. There's plenty of other poison type Pokemon out there to use where you don't have to use Drowsy and so on and so forth. But there are psychic types in here, which can be scary. However, it's not going to be scary. We have Leech Life, which is super effective against Psychic. We also have Psychic, which is uh, somehow effective against some, like for example, and, and we're Psychic, so we're, we have an effect against uh, poison type. So that's kind of a good thing. And we get the knockout. Very good. And we're fighting Arbok. That's a one hit knockout. Very good. So now we beat this tamer guy. And we move on to this next trainer in here. And we transition right over. And we fight this guy. Who doesn't have much but a drowsy and a hypno. So Leech Life does not a lot. Oh no, why don't I go for that? Why don't you go for Leech Life, Judy? Man, past me is so stupid. Okay, <laughs> Leech Life is the better move. Psychic isn't going to do much to Drowsy. He's psychic. It's not going to hurt him. Unless he was a, if he was a ghost, it might affect him, but he's not. Leech Life gets the knockout. And we move on to take on Koga. Now Koga, like I said, this is not going to be hard at all. In fact, it's so easy, we take zero damage. 
Uh, by the way, Koga is a ninja. That's a hint to the name of Baxter and where it's from, if that gives you a little bit of a hint. One knockout. Two knockouts. Coughing, three knockouts. We outspeed all these Pokemon, and we also outspeed the Weezing, and guess what? That's another knockout. He's going to explode anyway, we just beat him to it. So now we beat Koga, and we move on to face rival number six. Rival number six can be difficult. This is a first time attempt. First attempt win, let me rephrase that. So we got Pidgeot. Sleep and Powder, good. Now we can go for Psychic. It does a little over half, and knocks him out. Very good. Now Execute, we can put him to sleep, and we can use Leech Life. It's a two hit knockout, so very good, great. Now we're moving on to Gyarados. Gyarados is probably the most difficult one of this group to beat. Um, and it's because he just, somehow he has an immunity to being put to sleep too. I don't know. Every time I try to put him to sleep in every game I've ever played, he's always the most difficult to put to sleep. Um, Mega Drade isn't doing much. It's just replenishing some of our health, some of my health. Psychic is much more effective. Um, I'm trying to get greedy and just not have a lot of hit point or have a lot of health when I face the final, his final Pokemon, which is Charizard. Alakazam, we put him to sleep. We can replenish most of our health, but we don't put him to sleep. Instead, we get Confusioned, did, did. and now we're facing uh, Charizard with not quite full health, but a decent amount of health. As long as we outspeed and put him to sleep, we have a good chance to win this. And we get an Ember, which didn't do too much, but we're still taking too many hits. But we are decent health right now. Psychic is about a third, we get a critical hit, and then we get the knockout. Very good. Now we're moving on to Giovanni number two. Which is easier than Giovanni number one, ironically. Well, not quite easier. Um, he does have a Nitter, Nitter Queen that doesn't get no one hit knocked out. But Psychic should knock out Nitterino. Very good. Nitterino. Um, Kangaskhan. Could be a... Well, that's a two hit. Never mind. Guard Spec. I don't know what Guard Spec does. I, I need to look it up. <laughs> I really don't know what it does. Never even used it. Never even thought to use it. I don't know what Guard Spec does. But we're not supposed to use this stuff in battle anyway, Giovanni. That was the rules. You need to read the rules. So you knock out Rhyhorn in one hit. Nido Queen could be a one hit, but it's not. She has very good defense. I played through with her, and uh, as usual, Giovanni does not use her properly, but we get the win. Now we're fighting my favorite gym leader, Sabrina and her whip, and uh, which I'm really into. That's why I like her. And uh, we lose this first battle because I got greedy thinking I could one hit knock him out with just Leech Seed. No, it's not a strong enough move, and we dang near get knocked out with one hit. Uh, if you're curious as to why it does a lot of damage, Poison type is is weak to um, Psychic in Gen 1. So we're Psychic or Poison Bug. Um, somehow the Bug part should resist the, the Psychic move, but it doesn't. I don't know. Um, just like while well, we have a while well, we're part Bug or part Poison, so we are resisted by a Psychic. We have a Bug type move. So anyway, so get the knockout. Now we put Mr. Mime. Actually, we don't put Mr. Mime. We try to put Mr. Mime to sleep. We try to put him to sleep again. Okay, go to sleep, Mr. Mime. And then we get a Leech Life. He did, uh, so it's two hit knockout. Full health going into the Venom Moth. Hey, that's us. And <clears throat> we get a Psychic. Not quite a knockout. Um, very close, though. Almost full health going into the Alakazam. Question is, do we outspeed? We do outspeed. We put him to sleep, but he wakes right up. Now he attacks us. Psybeam sucks. And it's a horrible move. Now she uses Psy Wave, thank goodness, because another Psy Beam probably would have knocked me out. And we're replenishing some health here. <coughs> and Sabrina whips her whip out and heals her po Pokemon. But we still get the win. Sorry, Sabrina. Better luck next time. Save the whip for later. Now we're fighting Blaine. And right here I put myself in past suspense. How long am I going to hold it here? Just ha! Ha ha! Ha! Ah. How does that sound to you? Ha! And his pause, or is that ha? Ha! I don't know. How does it sound to you? I don't know how it sounds. Let me know in the comment section down below. So Blaine should be one of the hardest trainers we fight. However, he's not. Reason why he has good AI. Good AI <laughs> means he's going to do stupid stuff. It's supposed to mean he's supposed to do good stuff, but he's going to do stupid stuff. So let me let me show you this. His he does a lot of moves where he predetermines a potion. Okay, he predetermines a potion. Watch this. He just did that in the last one. Psychic. Okay, knocked him out. So watch. He will predetermine a potion. Instead of picking a move, he already determined that he was going to do a potion. 
Okay. Psychic. He, I knocked him out. Now he's going to do it twice. He's going to do it two more times, I think. Arcane Eye. Psychic. Super Potion. Or retroactive. Psy Super Potion again. Psychic. Doesn't heal again. But he could have. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. This is why Blaine is like one of the easiest. He should be the hard, one of the hardest gems. Uh, but he's not. Now we're facing Giovanni. And Giovanni is one of the easiest gems. Especially with this Pokemon. Not all the time, but with this Pokemon specifically, he was. Uh, Mega Drain is a one hit. Very good. Next Pokemon is Dugtrio. Dugtrio, ironically, is not a one hit. Um, I don't think Ground is as affected by Grass moves as Rock is. Um, because I've, I've had this consistently going on with Ground type Pokemon where we're not one hit knocking them out. However, Nidoqueen is a one hit knockout with Psychic because she is a poison type now. We are stronger than we were earlier. And so now we're moving on to the next book. Nido King is also when it knock out. He has lower health than Nido Queen. And now we're at level 56 with the Rhydon. Rhydon's a one hit knockout. And now we beat <coughs> um, Giovanni pretty handily. We move on to the rival fight. I usually give some rare candies to my Pokemon at this point. However, I decided not to. We're at level 56. I want to see if I can win this battle without it. It's really a gamble because I can waste about a good two, three minutes of time trying to do this. However, I was pretty confident. So, we're going to use Sleep Powder. Sleep Powder again. And we're going to get Sleep Powder off eventually. Very good. Use Mega Drain to get a little bit of health back. And I'm like, you know what? Just use Psychic. We, the next Pokemon is going to replenish all of our health. He's got two Pokemon we can replenish all of our health on. One is Rhyhorn, which is this Pokemon right here. Boom. One hit knockout. Very good. We have full health. Execute. We outspeed easily. Leech Life. It's going to do two-hit knockout. We could have replenished our health there, too. Fantastic. Very good. Moving on. Gyarados. Um, nothing any, not, nothing crazy good here. Um, but he actually initiates the badge boost glitch for us right there. Leer uh, lowers our defense, but it ups our other stats. So it actually does what the badge boost is. If you don't know what the badge boost is, I'll explain it after this battle. Alakazam we put to sleep, so we outspeed, which is great. Leech Life replenishes all of our health. And then one more Leech Life knocks him out. So now we're down to Charizard. Charizard. We have our stats boosted, but we leveled up. So that didn't do anything. Um, Psychic. Three Psychics as a knockout. Okay, so Badge Boost. Whenever you increase your stats in Generation 1, whether it's with a move like Agility or Double Team or whatever, it boosts all your stats by a percentage based on what all badges you have. So when you do a, a, a boost of your defense or a lower of your defense, it actually ups the boost of all your other stats. So now we're fighting Lorelei. And in this one, we just want to get through Dugong, and we just want to get through um, Cloyster. So Mega Drain is almost a one hit, so close. Maybe one more level would have done it. Uh, but we get the knockout, and now we get the Slowbro. Slowbro, we want to put to sleep, and we're going to mimic Amnesia. Amnesia does exactly what I just said. Initiates the badge boost glitches. Boosts all of our stats, our, our speed, our defense, our attack. Um, boosts all of them. So now that we're getting all this stuff boosted, the the goal here is that the next couple Pokemon will be easily one hits or uh, easily two hits. So Psychic does almost enough damage to knock out Slowbro. So now we're at full health going into Jinx and Lapras. So Jinx can be scary. Jinx has Ice Punch. If Jinx gets hits Ice Punch, you're done. You might as well just, just reset because, well, if she freezes you, that's the better way of putting that. So now we're using Psychic on Lapras, almost 50%. Blizzard does more than half damage to me, so it would have been a knockout if he did it again. But we get the knockout against Lorelei. Now we're fighting Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno much, but here is a compilation of how to knock out a Pokemon. Uh, so Mega Drain is a one hit. Oh, or uh, okay, we're actually doing Mega Drain. I was gonna say I'm gonna kick my, I'm gonna kick old me's ass if I keep doing these dumb moves. Psychic, it's a, it's this is a very easy knockout. Okay. Oh, oh, hit my lead. What are we gonna do? Oh, oh, psychic. I'm sorry, hit my lead. You're one hit knockout as well. I'm just walking Pokemon in, into the ring and knocking them out one, one at a time. Uh, Mega Drain knockout, and now psychic. It's not. A, it's a. It's a two hit. In submission, the best fighting move in Generation One does literally nothing. It's fantastic. I love fighting Bruno. We don't talk about him much, but he is a really easy member of the Elite Four. Now we are fighting Agatha in the. Agatha is what J Rose Eleven calls a lottery because she can confuse you, 
She can burn you, or I'm sorry, she can confuse you, she can paralyze you, she can put you to sleep. She has all those things at her disposal. Um, and she also likes to use Dream Leader stupidly. Um, and the reason why, hold on, I can explain that, so give me one second, and I'll explain why. So she's using, I'm a psychic type, so in her mind, Hypnosis is not a ghost type. I think a Hypnosis is a psychic type Pokemon. So Dream Eater, to her, is the most effective move that she can use against me. Even though Nightshade is also ghost, Dream Eater's ghost, and Dream in, in ghost type, I'm weak to ghost. That is why she keeps doing Dream Eater, without putting me to sleep first. It's, it's, a, it's not a glitch, it's actually good AI, which says this is the most effective move because of typing. But what she doesn't realize is she has to put me to sleep first for that to work effectively. That is why she keeps using Dream Eater. So, that's great. We beat Agatha, we move on to Lance. Um, um, Lance isn't very tough. Gyarados is the toughest part of this. So, Sleep Powder. Very good. Psychic. Psychic again. Uh, let me re let me rephrase that. I, I worded something wrong there. It wasn't that uh, I'm Psychic, it's I'm Bug. So the most psychic move she has is Dream Eater. That's what it is. Or I'm Poison, I should say. So she's trying to use an effective move, which is Dream Eater. That's what I meant to say, so carry on. So now we're gonna, we get to Dragon Egg. We put him to sleep, and now we're gonna mimic Agility. Agility is gonna initiate the Badge Boost Glitch Force, and increasing our speed, attack, and defense. So that we go first, and hopefully we have enough oomph in our attacks to knock everyone out in one to two hits. Um, what would have been nice if I could have, like, mimicked... If I had two mimics would be great with this fight. Because I can mimic Hyper Beam from D Gyarados. And then mimic uh, Agility from Dragonair. But we get the knockout with Dragonair. Now we move on to second Dragonair. Not a one hit. It's close, but not a one hit. So Mega Drain gets the knockout. Now, this is a tough one. Aerodactyl's very fast. So I go for Sleep Powder. We miss. Bite doesn't do two. Actually, it does a decent amount. It is a quarter. So we're going to try Mega Drain. He's asleep now. Get a little bit of that health back. Psychic is a knockout. Very good. And Dragonite wouldn't do anything against us because, again, we're, you know, we're poison type. He's going to try Psychic on us. So he would have just done Barrier. Um, but we get the we get the sleep, we get the knockout, and we're moving on to the champion. Now, my prediction part of this video was, I said 2 hours and 30 minutes, 2 hours and 40 minutes between that time frame. So we're right on pace right now if we can get through this. So, brings out Pidgeot. I'm gonna put Pidgeot to sleep, and we're gonna knock Pidgeot out as quickly as possible. Psychic's not super effective, it's a little less than a half. And we get the knockout, good. We still have Mimic, so we're gonna Mimic a very specific move in this game. I kinda wish I'd kept uh, Leech Seed, because I still could've done something more effective. But that only does about, maybe, not even 20% maybe? So neither one of these moves are effective, but I can't Mimic anything right now. I have to save Mimic. We have a Charizard at the end, so I have a strategy to to end the game effectively. Now this could suck, because Alakazam could wake back up, recover, I have to put him back to sleep and do all that again and waste a lot of power points. One hit knockout, very good. Execute. Execute, this would be another Pokemon that'd be great to have Leech Life against. So Psychic does about 20%. Not quite a quarter. Yep, not quite. It's it's twenty percent. So right now, and Mega Drain does even less. Awesome. Psychic. Uh, maybe we get a critical hit here. We can knock him out in four. But I think it's gonna be fine. Ah, we get the knockout. Good. Okay, cool. So Gyarados, put him to sleep. Now we're going to mimic Hydro Pump. So that is the strategy there. Hydro Pump will help us knock out um, Charizard if we go first. Um, if we go first. That's really the key here. So Psychic gets the knockout. Now, I'm going to go for Charizard. We're going to hit Hydro Pump. I'm going to go for Broke. And we almost knock it out in one hit. Fire Spin could be so detrimental because we are weak to it. But we outspeed again and we actually get the knockout. So very good. We beat our rival. In, we're level 69. Nice. <laughs> and we beat our rival. We get to the end of the game at uh, just under 2 hours and 40 minutes, so I was dead on with my timing. Uh, I'll wait till the very end where it shows the exact time it ends, and then I'll kind of discuss some of the real struggles with this playthrough. 
And there we go. Six to nine. Very nice. And uh, so that's where we end up. Two hours, 37 minutes, and 18 seconds. So don't don't worry about the play time. I pause it and go do stuff, and sometimes I leave the uh, browser, op the thing open. So all in all, what are my opinions here? Well, solid playthrough. Um, ben and at if Ben and I could just have a move, like if you looked at like the move set um, that I showed uh, in the beginning, there's a Pokemon Yellow playthrough that gets confusion. That would be baller to have confusion early in this game. It would definitely help progress, um, progress through the game. Uh, in it, it is what it is. Uh, but I, I was looking at the move set for this and I was like dreading this, and it was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It, it's always worse in your mind. Than what it will be. It's like I thought Jigglypuff was gonna be so tough, but Jigglypuff had enough hit points that we were able to use struggle very effectively early on, and uh, we got pound shortly, like th three levels in. So um, very helpful. Um, but all in all, good playthrough, and uh, yeah, I'm excited about the next one. So here, here's a little bit of a itinerary. What's going on next with this uh, challenge? Next playthrough will be Doug Trio. Dugtrio will be the 50th Pokemon, or Big Diglett and Dugtrio. Diglett's 50, Dugtrio's 51. And when that's done, I will do my first third of the 151 I'm playing through ranking system. I will rank them from best to worst in a couple criteria. One will be, like, obviously time, like who is the fastest. Um, and then I'll also rank who I actually think was best. So sometimes speed the the speed of the playthrough is not going to be the best. Sometimes like this, I learn more as I play. So like for example, my Charizard run, if I did it today, would go a lot smoother. Same with my Venusaur run. Both of them and, and Blastoise, all of them would would be a lot smoother. I think Charizard get down to about one one min, one hour and twenty some minutes. I think uh, I think I get Venusaur down to about an hour and forty minutes. And I think Blastoise I can get all the way down to about an hour and thirty minutes. I think I can shave ten minutes off of Blastoise's time. Um, but that's because I've played it m so much more since then that I've learned when and where I can get experience for the most part. So, um, But that's my video. I want to thank everyone for watching. Please subscribe, like, share, follow me on Twitter, all that good jazz. And you have yourself a good one. See you.